Hey, so yesterday I challenged ChatGPT to a debate and I'm happy to say that I won. Let me give you a little bit of backstory where this is coming from. So my name is Mike. I'm the marketing medic. I'm the author of the best-selling book, Empathic Marketing. And I have a podcast called Because Business is Personal. And earlier this week, I interviewed Brian Kramer. And he asked me, you know, what brand I thought, you know, utilized empathy the best. And I really surprised him with my answer when I said the brand that has, uh, that best leverages empathy is bar none, Donald Trump. And he, that was a bit of a jaw drop for, for, uh, for Brian, right? Because he was thinking I was going to say something along the lines of, you know, Dove Beauty Bars or Apple Computers or something like that, right? But I said Trump. And he and I didn't really get too deep into that discussion. But later on, I was thinking about it. I was like, I wonder what ChatGPT thinks about Trump and empathy. So I asked Chat. And uh, Chat said that when it comes to empathy, um, Donald Trump is not very empathic. He's more middle of the road. And the reason he said that is, Chat said that is because although he aligns with, you know, one part of the American uh, population, there's another part that he doesn't align with, that he's not em empathetic with. And I disagreed with Chat and, 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 and Chat came around and, and eventually agreed with me. And this is the reason. The reason is, is that Donald Trump's audience is not all Americans. He's not trying to win the hearts of everybody. He's just trying to win the hearts of the Republicans, right? And so that's his audience. And Trump knows what uh, Republicans are feeling. He knows what they want. He knows what their desires are. He knows what their frustrations are. And then he knows exactly what to say to resonate with them. And that's why he was such a powerful leader. And that's why he's still so strong is because he's got such a strong following because he said exactly what Republicans wanted to hear. Now, if he was going after all of America, well, sure. But the thing is, is if you're a politician, if you're a business owner, you can't please all the people all the time. And if you try to do that, then you're going to find yourself with failure, right? And that's why Trump didn't fail. Trump succeeded because he didn't mind being divisive, right? He wanted to offend the Democrats because the more offended the Democrats were, the more on his side his audience were, his Republicans were, right? And so think about that when you're marketing your business, right? Who is your audience? And I get this all the time when I'm meeting with new clients. I'm like, so who, who, who can you best serve? They're like, oh, my product works for everybody. Ah, oh, man, that's the best, biggest mistake you can make. Um, maybe your product will work for everybody, but you've got to niche it down, right? So you've got to go after this audience first and then that audience second. Like go after the low-hanging fruit first and then, you know, then you can test other audiences. But find that core. Like is it you know, 35 to 45 year old females who like yoga, right? Like maybe it'll work for all women, but 35 to 45 year old women who practice yoga, that's your sweet spot. Okay. So anyway, um, another couple of mistakes that ChatGPT made that most people make is confusing empathy with sympathy and compassion. And, you know, those things, those things are similar in that they understand the feel feelings of the people that you, um, that you're relating with. But with empathy, you don't share the feelings, okay? With sympathy and compassion, you're sharing those feelings, right? You're showing that compassion. You're showing that sympathy. But with empathy, you're just understanding it, right? And so this brings me to the next point is that with chat as well, chat was thinking that just because somebody's empathic, they have to use that empathy, that understanding with honesty and authenticity. And um, that's not true either, right? I'm not saying honesty and authenticity aren't valuable traits to have when you're marketing or as a politician, but as a definition, uh, empathy doesn't necessarily include authenticity and honesty. Okay. So my whole point of this video is that you really, to, you should have empathy and then you should leverage, leverage that empathy. But in order to do so, you need to know what empathy is. And empathy is simply having just the deepest understanding of what your audience is going through, you know, what their problems are, what their difficulties are, what their desires are, what their dreads are, what their dreams are, right? You got to understand all those things, but it's just an understanding. You don't have to share the feelings, right? And that's the thing with Trump. Like Trump's a billionaire, but his audience are mostly like, he's got a huge following of like under, underemployed, like impoverished, you know, Americans, right? He doesn't share their feelings, but he understands them. Okay. And that's the difference. So anyway, that's my little, uh, 
brag today how I fought ChatGPT. <laughs> like I said, at first, chat was like, yeah, no, Trump's not very empathic at all. But when we got to the end of our, uh, of our discussion, chat's like, oh my gosh, yes, tr Trump is so empathic because he understands his audience. And that was the key. It was his audience. And chat didn't understand who that audience was at first. Once it did, it realized how, uh, how empathic Trump really is. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you want some help with your empathic marketing message, just go to www.themarketingmedic.ca and uh, there's a few ways on that website that I can help you out. All right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.